Hey Mika, you gonna open this video? All right, I'll do it. All right guys, Ghostly Rich here, and today we're building Mika a shelter. It's actually gonna be a pergola. My plan is to try and expand it this backyard length, which isn't that bad. It's about 16 feet. It should be sticking out just over the fence because I want the water to go past the fence. We're gonna do it on a slope, just like the doghouse, but a little bit different. Got a whole bunch of timber coming today. I've already measured out my holes. Uh, basically what I did is I measured off the side of the house there, and then I measured here, and then I measured off the side of the house, and I measured to here, and then I measured between the two points here, and I measured between the two points there, and uh, then I measured from the centers to make sure my centers, so the center of this line to here matched with there, and the center from that line matched to there for the same distance, so we look like we're matching up pretty well. Um, I'll go more into depth before we lay them because I, that's why I've dug a little bit of a trough as you can see because I want to see where it's going to line up best. Ordered sono tubes for this project so that way we can bury, bury the sono tube and then put the concrete in that to hold the posts. Um, other than that, yeah as you can see Mika did some redecorating. If you're wondering about how I built the doghouse, that's on the channel. If you're wondering how I put up the fence, that's on the channel. Let's go and take a look at this project though. The lumber is arriving today. I'll show you once it all arrives. Look, it's the wood. All the shelter stuff. Ooh, there's those nice beams. Sick. That sauna tube, that's huge. You could stick Treek's head in there. <laughs> you totally could. The concrete in the garage, just in case, because it's supposed to rain. And as you can see, we have these two, which we're going to have to laminate together to make the bigger beam. And we've got all our trusses and stuff right here and there's going to be for our roof we have a few two by four things like that for bracing in between should be good to go gonna move this all to the backyard can't get over the size of that sauna tube though it's huge wild mika as you can see the wood is here today nice and fruish it is a nice sunny day and i don't know what i'm gonna get this for in the next little while so i guess today i'm gonna pour forms so what i gotta do is i gotta dig out all um, our holes i had mitch come over we talked more i started digging already but where that mark is right there is actually where i need to be so i'm gonna have to shave the hole up to that point i want to get at least three feet down if i could get four that'd be sweet and then i actually was a lot off with this one because uh, i thought he said we needed 16 feet between the holes it's actually only um close to 12 feet between the holes so that's going to be fun. So the first thing I've got to do is finish that off over there and then over here because the way he's designed it is so that way the water goes over the fence if there's a or it covers to right there at the fence and then it comes to right here. I could just move it over which I'm still planning on or still maybe going to do just so we have that overhang and we'll go from there. As you can see I'm in the hole. What I did is I dug even deeper, so we are at four feet. You getting vertigo, Terry? No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it just yeah. it looks like it's an endless hole right now. Yeah. So the plan is to uh, now I'm at four feet. Dig a little bit deeper because as I dig out, some of this gravel is going to fall in, and then we'll use that as a plate because I want to level it. And then after I level it, drop the sono tube on uh, inside the clay, and then after I drop the sauna tube in the clay we can fill it full of concrete and then copy it over there so how i did my measurements is i trusted how straight i made my fence and i measured off the side of the house which is a very dangerous game to play <laughs> but what we're going to do is basically set these posts because if you look at this rock like this one can move over that one right there which i still have to dig deeper there's no way like if you want to show them three show them those three rocks rock number one two and three that's kind of in the way of everything oh. but yeah, uh. so, uh, 
clay. Heavy, but great for concreting it. So. Yeah, and then this will be backfilled with all this gravel. So that'll help hold it too. It'll be nice and solid when we're done. And Mika is gonna continue gardening. Yes, the garden. <laughs> I didn't need those strawberries anyway. Oh, oh. There I go. To China. <laughs> That's when you know you're deep enough. Indeed. So, right now, <clears throat> we're already at four feet, I measured. But I just want to scoop around now and I'm going to slowly shave the hole to fit the girth of this pipe. And that should be it. Show you once it's in on what we're going to do. This is four feet. We're at the ground level. You can tell from putting it next to the rock right here. I want it to protrude just a teeny tiny bit so that way I can, uh, I'll put gravel around it and that way I can set the saddle. But now it's time to slide this tube in. So this is an eight foot sono tube. What I did is I marked from the bottom to the center at four feet, went all the way around. After I did that, um, now I've got a straight line all the way around. And my plan is to basically saw through this and then we'll have four feet for one side, four feet for the other, slide it into the hole, but I'll unwrap it, of course, before I slide it in. I just didn't want it to get too marked up on this. Not that it matters because the concrete is gonna wear through this anyway um, a lot of people are asking why I'm doing it this way one this way it can help the post not rot and two look at all the moisture in there I'm gonna just zoom you guys in that's the last thing I want to eat my post away especially since it's going into the clay at least this it'll make a nice strong brace I've got some saddles downstairs I'll slip in but right now it's put the first one and then after I get the first one into this hole, I'm going to come over here and match it over here. As you can see, got our level on there. It's a little bit right now. I just got to sink it in this way. But see, it's going to be that game where you're going to level it all the way around. Let's see. Bam. So at this point, I've already sunk it in. Push some rocks in. Get that rock you want to... Like for me, for that fence post, I want to make sure this is nice and compact under there. So I'm going to push this and just bury the sono tube up to the top. And then, like I said, just make sure you're getting it everywhere so that way you know it's going to be a solid base for when we're done. I got all this, some clay, everything. I'm going to mix it all in there together because the clay will help make the rock stronger. But time to backfill up to that line. And as you can see, it's literally going to be, uh, I'm going to have maybe a couple inches. Usually I would have gone a little bit more, but I wanted to get as much of that pillar in the ground for stability as I could. So now the saddle can go on top. And then when I do my flashing, it'll cover the saddle. And if there's a little bit of tube there, well, I'll trim it to the ground, whatever I got to do. But yeah, that's it so far. That's how you do it. <laughs> I get to repeat it on that side. That side's going to be harder. Because of how this is, I can't build the ledge the same way, but I have to pretty much try and dig down a little bit here so I can dig down to four feet. Because to dig four feet, you'll blow your back out. <laughs> All right, last final measurement. Level. Level. We're set. Oh. Got another one. This is all clay. Like, take a look at this. So you got your easy clay, which is the brown up top. And look at that gray clay. Like watch this. So brown clay, you can do that. Gray clay. <laughs> like it's tough. You're gonna, it's not the funnest stuff to dig up, but it is the best foundation you could ask for. <laughs> this is good. This is really, really good. As soon as I seen it, I'm like, okay, life just got worse for digging, but it got a whole lot more solid for aftermath. <laughs> so I dug to the depth I wanted. Now I'm just shading the hole. And yeah, so if you aren't using sono tubes and you're going to be just putting your posts in here, you're going to want to get like a, a tile or something. Like you want to, uh, like a tile for a garden and you want to slip it in there and you want the post to sit on top of that. The only reason why I say that is it'll keep a lot of that moisture away. And then when you put your concrete on it, it'll form that uh, brick. But if you don't do that, like 
Who showed them the, the tube over there? Just so they can see. Do, do, do. See all that? That's what's gonna eat and rot out your post if you just drop it in there and then concrete around it. So it's good to put like a brick or something in there. Even if it's a masonry brick, you have to dig a little deeper to compensate for the brick, but it'll keep your post from rotting on the bottom. And make sure your posts are treated. <laughs> As you can see, our posts are in. Same, everything. They're just in line. Looks amazing. Next thing we need to do is make some concrete. So, you can do fast set, which I don't recommend. I did it on the post. I mean, it's good. Just, yeah. If you can, especially since we're doing something so much bigger, I wouldn't recommend fast set. I would probably just do this stuff. Slower dry time, but... Oof. Yes, you should wear a mask. <laughs> so, get as much of your bag in there as you want. And then, soak it. Water. Get it all in there. If it gets a little wetter, it just takes a little longer to dry, but to tell you the truth, if I were you, I would rather have to be a lot, a little bit longer to dry and know that you soak this thoroughly. And then the next thing you're gonna do is if you have a secondary person or yourself, you just soak this like this, take a shovel, mix it up, get it all nice and in there. After you know that it's pretty much like baking a cake and getting all your mixture together, uh, <laughs> you're gonna just uh, scoop it up and pour it, put it in your hole. Don't pour it in your hole, put it in your hole. Perfect, that should be more than enough. If you take a look at this consistency, it's perfect. So this is what we really want to get to. Um, I'm much preferring the quickrete compared to the other stuff I used. Like this stuff is just, it's mixing a lot better, I'm finding. So, gonna fill up the hole. I'll tell you how many bags of the 30 kilograms. They're five bucks a bag, so nice and cheap. But let's see what we can do. Also, as you can see, my pads are wet and the reason why is if you take a look, we got our clouds rolling through. Good old fun. Mm. All right, so when you do this, you can measure across and across, and you're just gonna try and go right to your center spot, and bring this all the way down. Sit that on there, on your form. Lightly put your level on here. And now it's leveling. So you can see, you take this off. So that's good, but if we look over here, they actually, they almost have to do this. Just like that, and then this corner's gotta go down. It's hard. So, just try and get it as level as you possibly can. So when you put your post, you don't have to shim or do anything too much, but that's pretty damn close right there. Like, I got my bubbles within. And that's what you want. Like I said, uh, that's it. Go ahead, do that and leave this. You can square it up against your fence if you want or square it up, whatever you want to leave it square against. Like you want it as square as you can get it. So one way of doing it is leveling as best you can, measure off the house and then what you're going to do or something, you just need to square it up. So we're going to measure it off the house and then square it up. After it's squared up, drop our poles on here. Well, not right now. You're going to want to mm -hmm. let dry for three. I'm going to leave this for three days. This is a lot of concrete. And also check these in, a, in about Five, every 10 minutes, check them for about an hour because you want to make sure these stay level. But other than that, that should be it for day one. So Tariq's going to hold that against the house just to show you. So same height on the other side. And if we pull this tight, you can see it's 179 and a half. 179 and a half. He's got to move over a bit more. There we go. Now we're 179 and a half. Maybe have to play with it a little bit more. But if you come over here, Ah, 179 and a half once again. And this is why you're constantly checking because I just seen, yeah, right there. It's almost, if anything, worth it within an eighth, which is perfect. That's what I wanted to be. And 
Yeah, so we know those are square. Now, like I said, you just need to watch them as they set. So today we are gonna take the siding off so we can put our structure up. First thing you're gonna wanna do is if you have sprinklers, you have to pop those caps off. For me, I don't have to pop that one off, but all they do is they pull forward. So just grab the plastic and carefully move it forward. Depending on how old they are, they could break if they are brittle. So now that I've moved that forward, next is to go up there and along the edge, along that plastic, see there's a lip up here. What we're gonna be doing, it's coming up here. So again, this just pulls forward and comes off. Be careful not to break that wax, otherwise you're gonna have a whole lot of water. But once you look up, if you press up on this, move it around a little bit, you're gonna see these Robertsons. You're gonna pull them out and this whole lip should come off. And if we take this lip off, then this will come right out, meaning that we can drop this part because we're gonna need that to get this piece of siding off if you're bolting it to the house. So, like I said, just go along here, take out these screws on the lip. Just, you'll find them by moving this around. And then after you pull those out, you should be good to go. This is very easy to figure out where the next one is because you can push up a bit. And where it gets tough, like right here, if we go up there, we're probably gonna find a screw. But over here, we can tell there isn't. So then loosen that and just, like I said, take the tr trough off. People are like, oh, you could probably just squeeze it out. But the problem is, one, big chance of breaking, especially when it's really cold right now. And two, the reason why I'm not bending it, because I'm gonna have to take this off anyway because I need to get the siding off. You're looking at this, this is the first one, so I went to that seam. These will be kind of twisted in together. You just have to work them out. Once you do, you can just slide these right out, no damage. So you can see this is all one length. So what I have to do is not only just take off this ridge, but up here along the beams, you're gonna see these screws. This is holding your top first sheet on. So go along and remove these all the way down for the length of your pergola or as long as the strip is because you're going to have to go that full strip. So you can actually leave this hanging up here if you want to, the metal piece. You don't have to take this off. You can if you'd like, but it's majorly, you got to get these siding panels out. So just go up to the very end of the panel, make sure you get that screw out and then you just go along to each beam and take out the screw holding the first flash down because then you're going to have to go to the next flashing, take those screws off and so on and so forth. So this is the first seam and I know I've gotten the screws all the way out to, the, to that one. So you just grab it and sink it down and look, it exposes these nails. So time for the next hard part. You get to pull these little tack nails out to release the next strip. A wild Mitch has appeared. Take a look. He's pulling off the last piece. So after you have this off, what we did is we measured from that to the J channel because we want to go just above that or the trim above the windows. And we found that that is within an eighth of being on track. So we are going to use that to do the bottom of the ledger. And then we determined the angle we wanted to go because we're doing a sloped roof. If you're doing peaked, it'll be different, but yeah, we're doing a sloped roof off to the other side of the fence. So after distinguishing that, what we did is we measured that down from the house because you're going down to pretty much eight feet. And then after having the laser level, lined it up with our line that we have on the house, which is up there. <laughs> and then turn the, the level, measured off our first cradle. So now we had the height for our first post by taking the measuring tape, putting it up and seeing where the red line lined up on the tape. Then we did the same over here because both are gonna be a little bit different. So now that we've got both our different measurements, now we can cut our post accordingly. And then we can mount those posts. So as you can see, we've marked it on our post. Now we need to roll our post and we're going to have to make our measurement on each side because next thing we got to do is go through a circular saw and then 
we might have to do the last bit actually by hand. And the reason why is these are just so thick. If we were working with a six by six, be easy enough with the skill saw, but we're working with eight by eights. So we cut through, and then on top of cutting through, we have to take care of making it smooth er, right here in the center. So we cut through with our saw and stuff like that. So the next thing that we're gonna do, just to make it a little bit more on the top, I have a mobile planer. <laughs> and we're just going to put this on, and we're gonna try and plane the tip. Oh, look at that beast. Holy. It sits right in the cradle. <laughs> she is beefy. All right, time to slide the next one in. We've measured both our beams. Both beams are different sizes. So what we're going to do is cut them both so they're both 16 feet. Then we'll put them one at a time up on here. The first one will go up. We'll screw it in. And then the second one will go up and then we'll laminate it into the second, and we'll show you how we do that. So we measured from the concrete at the bottom to the post on both sides. We now have them level for distance away from the house. So next thing we're gonna do is pile drive some decking screws into the small holes on the cradle, so that way it'll hold them while we do the beam portion. So we don't have to make any nice holes on the front face. We're gonna have to make a hole on the back here and what we're going to do is we're going to use that to brace it to the fence so that way when we're building this this doesn't give way or anything like that keeps it nice and square up and makes it easier to move around so as you see we're just grabbing some scrap pieces of two by four i had from framing the basement and making mika's doghouse which is currently covered in siding and yeah now we're just going to Use this up. If you have your extra, what you do basically is, you can see we used a couple pieces of extra here, but we use this as a block for when we did that side. So it was resting here. We screwed that side in and then it screws in up here. So it's just two screws, one on each top end of the fence, and then one screw on the back side of the post, which no one will see. And what that allows us to do is when we, uh, we're gonna have to, you basically have one person pull this out from the house, the other person has the level. Let's just show you how it's done over here. So, if we have the level, you'll notice, see how he's just holding it loosely up there? It literally looks like a big U-shaped magnet. Well, I'm gonna hold this here, and then I'm gonna see that, okay, I have to push it out towards the house. So if I didn't have the camera in my hand, I would push it out till that was level like so, and then, I would smack those two screws into the top there. And then after that's level that way, then we would grab this and we slide it this way to level it this way. So this is way allows us to level it that way. Once we have that way figured out, then we slide it side to side on here and put the screw in on the back. The worst end of the two after you do as you can see this is the worst end of this one and that's the worst end of that one so that's how we're what we'll do and then we'll square them up and two passes of the circular saw should make these square so our main structure is up what we did is we actually put a couple lines we measured from the bottom of the pole to the bottom of the pole so that way we could make accurate lines because when you're up here this isn't gonna be as accurate. So what we did is we measured, like I said, bottom of the pole to the bottom of the pole. 
marked that on the first pillar uh, so we knew where it should end and start using the base. And then we centered it using that. Then we put a decking screw in to hold the first one in, and then we lifted the second one up. We just didn't want to laminate this on the ground. It's just way too heavy. Doing one of them at a time is still heavy. So now at this point, now that I'm holding this one up here, we have that one, we're literally just going to laminate them by putting some big screws, which are over there. They're like a golden screw. And yeah, we've got to laminate them together. So as you can see, we got our first two in. One thing I have to recommend to you is measuring out your bolts and squaring them because these are going to be aesthetic. Unless you want to put them on the backside, but I kind of like the thought of having some nice big bolts showing. So, and again, if you want to take a look at how aggressive these screws are, they're ridiculous. They look good though. So. As you can see, I have my impact driver with an impact socket because they're torques and they're just gonna drive in there. So from this point, because we know our beams are a little bit twisted, we're gonna use some ratchet straps to ratchet these things together. Now what I'm gonna do is you can see, we made those two beams level on that side, but now they're a little bit off from this side and there's a gap between the beam. We wanna close the gap using the ratchet straps, but we wanna also lift this beam by putting the claw hammer in underneath and then you just twist it a little bit to raise that beam. And then you can make them level while one person ratchets them together like so to close that gap. Make sure you're using strong ratchet straps or clamps. When you go to do this, if you've noticed you've got a bit of a gap space, don't worry, this happens. Um, what you can do is from the outside here, put a, one of the GRK screws in on an angle. It'll go in and it'll suck that bad boy right up. And trust me, that side had a massive gap. We were to suck that right in. Looks so good. There you go. That is the main support. That is so heavy duty. And yes, it weighs a lot. So now that we have that going and we know it's good, Let's see. Do you want to explain this or no? Sure. Okay. So we're trying to check. So right now, we would like to mount our ledger to the house, and we need to make sure that the ledger mirrors the beam that we have out here. So to do that, we need to find square, like check, transit, transfer this point, the side of the post, onto the house in a perfectly square way. The way to do this is to use the three, four, five method basically a triangle, a right hand triangle. If you measure three feet one way, four feet the other way, the hypotenuse will be five. So what you do is you measure three feet one way, you make a mark, measure four feet this way, and you make an arc. Then you measure from this point to this point and make another arc. And wherever they intersect will be a perfectly 90 degree uh, corner this way. And a perfectly straight line. Perfect. After we used his diagram here and we found out where both lines intersected, what we did is we set up the laser level on the very edge of this post and we made sure that it's completely lined up with the post. Then what we did is we went across, put the shovel over the mark. We'll show you how he did over here. Right there. So you can see both our arcs right there and right there. That's where they intersected. We lined the laser up so it went right through here by putting a shovel in front of it and you could see the laser on the shovel. By doing so, and we lined it up there, we transferred, as you can see that laser mark up there, we'll try and zoom it in, up there. And with that laser mark, we marked it on there, we marked it on there because we did the same arc over here. By doing so, we measured that post to that post. Then we came over here and we measured the, between the two marks and it is exactly the same. We thought we were trying to be within an eighth. It's like exact, exact. So now from here, now we can see where our ledger is gonna sit up there. We know how long it has to be. And on top of that, 
we also have to know where we have to notch out around that sprinkler up there. Basically from right here, what we're gonna do is take it. This one's got all our drawings on it and we have to cut it anyway. So we'll put the one with all the drawings up against the house because we are doing mathematics and showing you mathematics with <laughs> different procedures. Feet, so the same as our beam length. Boom, right there. And if you wonder why does he put a Nike check mark? Because this side is waste and this is where you're gonna line your square up and put your line to cut. Well, bam, bam. What we did is right above the windows, we know that we have our header wood. So what we ended up doing was we pegged it for now, loosely, and then now you can see the wood, how it transitions on the shear wall there. It should transition down if you want to. You can always peel back the paper and see where they've nailed or screwed the plywood uh, that your siding, of course, is attached to because that will show you where the wood is in the wall as well. So you can always peel it back a little bit and see where you're going to do it. But make sure you do it in between all the spacing of your rafters. I'm doing two foot rafters. So that way, every two feet, you'll have a rafter. It'll be super solid because we did two by eights, nice and solid. We got our first one in place. What we had to do is play around with some angles. As you can see, we made a template one. And then after we did that, we basically tried to work out all our degrees for each end. But even then, there are still other things that come into play when doing this. So don't be surprised if as you're doing this, uh, you're like, man, why didn't my angles work out? That's why you always want to have a couple spare pieces so you have one to play with on your angles. So we worked out our first angle. What was our first angle ended up being? 16 degrees. So we got 16 degrees out of this one. And then we went farther down after we did our measurements and we had to do our crow's foot right here so that way we can slip it onto the beam. So the beam sits right in here on its angle, and this one was a five degree angle, right? Uh, I'm looking for nine. 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 So we got nine. Same though. So we tried, we tried 15 and it didn't really work, so we went to nine. Yeah. It's a lot better. So we got that nine degree angle in our cut right here. And then as you can see, what we did is we cut off afterwards. We realized that we need another inch and a half off after our measurements. And other than that, after we got our first template done, we traced it onto the next, and then basically now we have our measurements and we just have to make a bunch more of them. The first two on the outside, we're gonna be using L brackets on, so the two outside ones. But what we are actually gonna do first, because our wood has a natural twist that's going on a little bit, uh, we are gonna start on that end and we're gonna work our way over. So naturally, it will help us brace that beam. We do have this one braced right now. It is doing a good job, but what we wanted to do was just uh, do it one by one by one just to help us with the action as we come over this way. So next thing we're going to do is make this last cut for this one. We'll slip that one onto the next and then we can start pounding in our joist hangers. Putting up your joist hangers, important thing to note is that your saddle is going to sit lower like as you can see he's doing i had tacked it up a little bit and <laughs> it's a good thing mitch got it because it was uh definitely a little higher so as you can see see how it's actually down below you'll see after he pegs all four corners that one you want to leave a tiny bit of a v not much like almost zilch but it's just so you can slip it in there properly Otherwise, if uh, you have any sort of twist, it will not slip in that joist hanger properly. But as you can see, the saddle is pretty much, you'll see a little tooth on the saddle. And you can see that is exactly where it is, right where the little drop down hangs a little bit. It's like right on that drop down. <laughs> and then you nick the saddle. But yeah, either way, five nails, get all your saddles ready. Probably easier that way. And then after that, we can slip them all in and then nail them all in after. Now for the corner bracket, if you didn't uh, get any corners, you can cut, if you have a couple extra saddles, you can cut them into corners as well. 
just by notching it right on that edge piece just before it goes in. And then you have a whole area to nail to. When you're putting them on, it's just slide it like that, lift it up, slide it into the saddle, and as you do, it should slide into the crow's foot in the back. Best to do with two people. All right, so if we were to go up, you can see that they are all mounted now, all the joist hangers. Sorry, it is starting to get dark now. And then, right now, we cut some blocking for the center. We'll be hammering some blocking at the very end. Or, well, screwing. After you've done joist hangers, you'll realize why you're just so happy to use screws again. The joist hanger nails are just crazy. And then, if you want to, at the very end, when you come to this point, some people like to put a flashing at the very end. You can do that. Put a 16 so that braces all of these. So you have a brace there and a brace there. Just so that way it keeps them all nice and separately apart. Right now, we aren't going to be doing that. So we snapped a row every two feet up there. And now we're just going to put these on the rows and nail them. And we measured they're exactly eight feet since we have a 16 foot structure. Just brace them on that middle beam. And then, yeah, just do them every two feet and make sure they line up. Guys, take a look at this. Holy smokes. It's beefy. So the last thing that we did is we just added a couple of braces off the corners with the uh, scrap two by eight. And it looks really, really, really good. So when summer comes around, I'll stain. I want to bring some of the wood colors out so that way it's kind of a different color because you got three different kinds. You got Douglas fir beams, you got some treated, and then you've got SPR. What was it? SPF. So it'll look kind of really cool because you have three kinds of wood popping. And then once we have the roof on, oh. Today we're putting the roof on. You can see we got our new roof. It's going to be a composite material right here. And then we've got uh, some metal flashings for the outside. We've also got some caps that you'll see later on, which are going to go around the bottom to keep Mika from chewing the posts. We haven't had any chewing problems yet, but with my luck, she's going to end up starting to chew them. So for now, we're just going to screw the first set of our flashings on and we'll go from there. We got the first drip tray on. And then if you look up and over here, We've got the first piece going on and then we just are going to overlap and continue. As you can see, we're just overlapping them like so, screwing them in so that way we've got a little bit of overlap, making sure it's nice and watertight. Oh, we got the first layer on, as you can see. So far, so good. If you take a look at this screw, these are the ones you're going to need. As you can see, they have this black cover on here what this is is actually a gasket and it seals against the wood so it doesn't rot if you use regular old screws or anything like that and it doesn't have that gasket it's going to get in the wood and it's going to rot your stuff right out so make sure you've got that do you approve of the roof don't look at mom for your answer i don't know mom do we as you can see we got the second layer on so it went this way then we went that way and then now it's the last layer that's all she wrote from down here. Take a look at that. That looks so good. Imagine that after we get the big beam down, or small little eye beam, and then we're gonna put a box around there, fireplace on the inside of the box. Sick. Now if we come up here, we'll go see what's going on up here. The last screw. That's all she wrote. Right. Nice. Look at that, right from this roof onto this roof. Perfect. Man, that was tight in there. Perfect. So, a little bit of flashing and then she'll be done. Looks amazing. Take a look at that sick view right now. checking the roof while I'm up here. So far, not a whole lot of leaves, which is great on the flat spots. Patch job, anchor points. There's the top of that roof. Looks sick. 
last parts just to throw the cat flashing on and stuff like that. When you're putting your flashings up, you just gotta do your cuts across so that we can fold them in so you have a cap to screw to the end. Like right there, you can see, just kind of screw it in there and then do your last seam up there. Have a minor bit of overlap and screw it in. Do it on both sides. Take a look at that, the other side is done all the way up. Now we're just gonna actually cut a piece of the L channel for up there to go between the siding and there. We'll bolt it up so that way we've got a bit of a drip tray right there too. Chances of water getting in there is very slim unless we got some sideways rain. But we'll just put it in there also for architectural reasons so it looks good. As you can see we have that in there, it looks great. So now from this point, if there's any joints or maybe you missed with a screw or something and you're worried about leaking through that screw hole, what you could do is go with some black silicone or whatever you want and just fill all those little holes. Go over to here, you could caulk all the uh, sides that enter to your house, everything that's like that. You could seal every single one of them, which we will do some and some not, but I'm not going to explain too much because the last thing you need is somebody saying, oh, well, you should have cocked this as well. Just basically, if you want to, go nuts with it. And if you don't want to, just make sure you at least get the areas that attach to your house so that way uh, you don't get any leaking there. Other than that, that is the roof done. It looks absolutely sick. All of it along the edges. Again, if you wanted to, if you're really concerned, you could have put, I could have put a fascia board there. I didn't bother. I kind of like the look of having the rafters like that. So again, that's going to be a designer standpoint and uh, a personal preference depending on what you want. And that is basically it. Thanks again for watching this project. From here, the next thing you might see me do is for lighting. I might actually end up throwing some string lighting up here. The other project, like I said, that you might see me do, I want to put a small piece of I-beam right here. And then I want to basically do a massive industrial style uh, fireplace right here, floating off the I-beam. I have a guy that's going to come and he's going to run a gas line for me. And I also have a guy coming to run the electrical because the other thing that's going to be possibility is I'm going to level this later with gravel. And a hot tub's going to go there and I'll build a hot tub roof. And that's another thing I want to do from right here in the corner. So I'll have to get a plug put right here for that. So there's a couple of things that I will be getting done. So I'm tapping off this wire right here and they're going to bring that up to the lighting in here because I want that to come on with that. And if you don't want that, you could just grab another wire from down here in the triple gang or they'd have to cut in a triple gang on the inside of your house. And then what you could do is have a separate light so that way you just fire on the lights in the pergola or the awning, whatever you want to call it. But yeah, that's where we're at. Thanks again for watching. Press like if you liked the video, subscribe for more. This is a really cool project. So if we back out here, just so you can see this, as you see that's without, that's with. The reason why I'm putting these guards on here is because of Mika. She's still in her nice chewing phase. And unless I do this, she is going to eat the living heck out of these beams. And I just don't want that for the next year and a half. Well, she's still in puppy stage. So I'm gonna put one more on there. And then it'll have a nice look too. Once I have the fireplace here, it'll have some black with the wood. So it's not going to look so bad at all. It's again, personal preference. Some people that looks horrible and that looks great.